Mikael, good afternoon, good to see you. Hello. Can we start off with team news for Sunday and any developments and updates on William Sullivan? No, no real changes um, in the rest of the, the players that were still injured. Um, we have some hope with one of them. Tomorrow maybe he's able to train, but uh, we have to see. And that is? I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Um, nine games to go, it's the business end now of this title race. Are you genuinely able to enjoy it? And can you switch off? And do you switch off? We do enjoy it, we have to enjoy it. And, uh, and we really need to embrace the moment and, um, and go for it. And, and the team is full of enthusiasm and positivity. And we know that we have a big challenge but I think big opportunity to go to Anfield and do something that we haven't done for many years and uh, that's what they is driving the team in the last few days. Mikael, I want to take you back to, to the corresponding fixture last season and, and that documentary showed how you approached and prepared your players for that game by the you'll never walk alone music at the training mm -hmm. ground. Can you give us an insight into how you prepared this time? Have you done anything special that you can tell us about? For us, it's something normal. We prepare every game in, in a different way, and we prepare the, the context, we prepare the team mentally, um, we prepare the scenario that we're going to be um, playing for, and um, and that day, we decided to do that. Last couple from me. The, the last league game at Anfield, it got a little bit feisty with, with you and Jurgen Klopp mm -hmm. on the sidelines. That's football. That happened in football, and after that, we hug each other and and move on. And last time we were together, um, nothing happens. I have full respect and admiration for what they've done, um, him and the coaching staff at Liverpool, and uh, we moved on. But did you learn anything about yourself, and would you approach that kind of situation differently this time? I don't know. I have to be in the situation again, so I don't know. I reacted that day, and the way I reacted to defend our players the best possible way, and. Uh, and that's it, hopefully. I don't like seeing me like this, uh, so hopefully not. Just finally, you mentioned that you haven't won there for so long. You were in the team when you last won at Anfield. Yeah. Have you used that at all as preparation for your players to tell them this is the feeling you can get? And what are your abiding memories of that day? Uh, we've been in a few grounds that we haven't won in 17, 22 years and another 18 in another one of them, and we have managed to do that. So we are capable of doing. Uh, we know that we're going to have to be at our very best um, to win the game and certainly better than we were there, especially the second half last year when we just opened up and, and allowed Liverpool to, um, to attack open space in a really comfortable way. So we're going to have to be better than last year, that's for sure. Just on a personal level though, what were your memories of, of that day and winning at Anfield? What kind of feelings was it for, for you and the team? Great, because before that as well, it was many years that we didn't we didn't do it. We did it once more. I think it was the year before when Van Persie scored on the 95th minute. I think it was. Uh, so some beautiful memories, um, an incredible stadium to play there, and just a, a unique experience for any player manager to to go there. Thank you. Thank you. Anita. Hi, Miguel. How are you? Very good. You were just saying there that you're full of admiration for what Jurgen Klopp and his team have done there. Mm. How surprised are you by how things have gone for them this season? Because they are eighth in the table, tenth points, top four, 29 points between your Arsenal side and his Liverpool side. Just how surprised are you that they're there at this stage of the season? More admiration because it shows the difficulty of, of being at the top and, and transform a football club, their identity, their beliefs and the competitive capacity for the last six or seven years at the level of they've done. And it shows how difficult it is to maintain and sustain that. Uh, so, yeah, we all have difficult moments. Um, but I think especially with what they've done at the club, I think um, it's something remarkable. Whilst they have been off the pace, in particular, away from home, their last home game saw them beat Manchester United 7-0. I imagine you've had a look at that as part of analysis and prep for Sunday. Um, other than them being really good at Anfield, yeah. what else have you taken from that game? Obviously, they have played games uh, when you look for probably the expected goals in the league, they are the best. Um, so there is things happening that are costing them points, that's for sure. But um, at home, you've seen a, a different kind of team and, uh, and we know how it is to play there. Uh, and we have prepared for that, expecting the best possible Liverpool and us being the best that we can be. And if we do that, we're going to have a chance to win the game. And then just finally, you've had a few additions to the team since the last game at Anfield last season. 
um, namely to Zeus and Zinchenko, who, who know what it's like to come up against them and play them and win. One player I wanted to ask you about was Leandro Trossard, because, of course, mm -hmm. he already scored a hat-trick against them earlier this season. How much of an advantage does that add to your side going into this game? It's great to have a player that has experienced uh, something really nice and positive on that stadium, and uh, Ale was a crucial player on that day. Uh, it was a beautiful game to watch. And um, and that's what we need, players with a lot of belief on that pitch that we can go there and, and win it. Thank you, Augusta. Thank you. Hi, Mikel. Hi. Hope you're well. You were mentioning about the difficult one form you've had at Anfield in recent years. What is it about playing at Anfield that is so difficult? And what's got to change this weekend for you to get a result there? That they are a great team, <laughs> managed by a top manager, and they create a, an incredible atmosphere that makes it really difficult for all. For any opponent, as it is to come to the Emirates, you know, very, very difficult. So um, we know that, and the opportunity is there ahead of us on Sunday um, to do something that we have done in the last two or three years is to win in places that the the team didn't do for many, many years. And Granite Jack is having his best season in front of goal for, for Arsenal this year. What what's changed for him this season? Click mentality. Feeling capable of doing it, understanding where he needs to be positioned in, in the right moments, training and being every single day willing to, to improve and, and support the team in the area that, in, in our opinion, was very necessary to take another step forward in, in our way of playing and, and winning more games. And a few fans were disappointed that Ben White wasn't in the England squad recently. Mm -hmm. He's been so good for, for you this season. What, what have you made of his performances? I'm extremely happy with him. Again, he's been really consistent. Uh, he has adapted to the position really well, the way they flow and the way they play, especially with, with a few players and, and the way they link up. It's, it's been great and uh, he would have other opportunities in the future for sure. And lastly, I just wanted to ask you about the under-18s this, this week yeah. getting into the, the, the FA Youth Cup final. Jack Wilshere has praised you this week for inspiring the next generation of Arsenal players. but. What does it say about Arsenal right now? It's not just the men's team doing well this season, it's the women's team yeah. and also the under-18s as well. Great for the club, that's what we want, being you know, the, um, on the front foot in every competition and having the chance to win prizes and what women have done is remarkable. What Jack, the coach and the star, the players did the other night, it was inspirational, the way it happened at the end as well. So late, so, so happy because it's very positive for the club. Thank you. Best Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is Emerson available to, to start on Sunday? Yeah, he's fine, yeah. Um, you mentioned Jurgen Klopp and the fact that he's he's built this team that's lasted over a few years. A few years. For you and this team that you've got now, is, is he an inspiration to you? We know your relationship with Pep's quite close, but a manager like Jurgen as well, does he have to be seen as an inspiration given what he's done over a long period of time? For sure, and, and coming from abroad, the way he did it, the way he installed that clear identity, values and and the way he transmitted and everybody bought his idea so early uh, and he needed some time and then results came up in in the best possible way so um, yeah for sure and there a lot's been made the last time you were at Anfield you've got a lot of monkeys off the back this year with some of the results you've got you come to places and got results like you mentioned would this be another example that you and this team are progressing from the one that might have lost there so so heavily in recent years Yes, and that's what we have to prove on Sunday, to be able to, to go there, perform, be emotionally sound and, and do the right things that we have to do in each moment um, to get away with, with the result that we want. And just finally, you play after City again. Do you prefer that? Or is it, or is it easy to say it's all dependent on the Man City result? Or do you prefer it? <laughs> <laughs> that helps, but uh, it doesn't matter, honestly. We have to focus on, on what we can do. There's still a lot of games to play for, and, and it's going to be a long race. Sorry. Just on um, on Clock Mikel, I think he's in his seventh, eighth season there. Can can you see yourself having that sort of longevity at, at one club? I think at a club like this, you have to earn the right to do that, and he he absolutely earned that right um, with the way that he transformed the club, and especially with the performance and results that they had, and and how much they won. So you can sustain um, yourself at this level only if you produce the results that um, are necessary to continue in this job. And, and a big thing for the, the squad this season that they've spoken about is is using painful experiences, Tottenham, Newcastle. How much going into this do you make them use what happened to Anfield last year as fuel for, for Sunday? 
Well, there are similarities. Obviously, the context is different. The team and the players that are going to be on that pitch are going to be very, very different as well. And uh, and we have to use it in the way that becomes positive for us and give us energy and, and believe that we can do it. And, and that's what we do. Hi, Miguel. Uh, you've got four attackers in really good form now. Obviously, Saka, Marcelli, Trossard, Jesus. But there's only and Reese. And Reese, of course. But even more, there's only three places yeah. in that attacking lineup. How difficult is it to manage that in a way that continues to get the best out of them when you're going to have to leave one or maybe two of them out of the, the starting eleven? Well, it depends on their. Uh, moment, I think, depends as well what we want to do and the qualities that we are seeking and relationship that we want in, in certain days. And then, obviously, you have five changes. You have the ability to change the game uh, with those players, which is, is great for us and, and is much better to have this problem because at the moment they are working really good. Would you have a, maybe a separate conversation with the ones who are left out, maybe similar to what you did with Kieran Tierney earlier in the season when you took him aside? And said we normally do that, especially with the players that obviously are there in, in very much contention um, to understand why we need it or why we made that decision. So it's clarity. And when there is clarity, I think the emotional state of the player is, is much better to, to go and afford um, a, a club and, and a team like we're going to be facing on Sunday. Hi, Mikel. You spoke about um, the 3-2 winner of Liverpool early in the season being one of your most beautiful moments at the Emirates. Did that, did something click in the team's mindset, do you think, where they maybe realise that we're in a proper title race, I see. Well, that was a big, uh, a big day for us, big result, um, and especially the way we did it, and we did it at the end after having a really good second half performance as well. Um, all adds up, all helps, and, and all gives confidence to the team to go to a different level and, and having the belief that they can win it against these type of teams. And you've repeatedly said over the years during your, your difficult times um, against Liverpool that you can't go there and play with fear. During that five losses in a row the last couple of years, did you sense that your players were playing with fear? And what makes you think now that they've got over that? No, first of all, it's a different group. We are coming from a different uh, position. And what I see is enthusiasm and positivity. And something you need to have there is courage. Courage to play, courage to, to impose yourself in the game and be dominant. And, and on Sunday, we'll try to be that team. If you go to Liverpool and, and get a win, you spoke about being at stage three or five. Does that take you to stage four if you can go? Uh, our result doesn't take you. Unfortunately, we wish <laughs> because then we could have been through many different phases this season, but it's, it's not that easy. It would be very helpful, though. Mm -hmm. Mikhail, just on that touchline incident with you, on reflection, do you, do you think that rolled the home crowd up that day? Because it was nil nil at the time, wasn't it? And you were, you were in the game at that point. Mm. Yeah, but after that, we had the best chance in the game. And we could have gone one up, <laughs> and, and one minute later we have a free kick, wide free kick, and they score a goal. Who knows? I don't know. Because you often talk about you know, the connection with the fans at home and how mm. important that's been. When teams go to Anfield, it's one of the toughest places in that regard to go. So I, I guess the question is, do you feel everybody's got to keep their cool on Sunday yeah. to get a result? Is that a message you're particularly giving to the players? They know that. They've been experienced that. They know we are aware of that. and. <laughs> And we know what we have to do, but nothing different. That's it. We we we've been playing in, in top spray. We went to to White Hart Lane and 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 did what the team did. And the atmosphere doesn't get much harder than that.